good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And I can assure you, I will not be rambling for the next 15 minutes. But interesting enough, you probably would realize you've used artificial intelligence more in the last one year than you probably would have expected. Chatbots, probably image editing, maybe even summarizing a few documents. From my perspective of having covered this space for a very long time now, there's one company which has got the puzzle completely right, or as the tech people would call it, the stack in place. Google is the answer. They do it better than most. You would have heard of Gemini as the AI chatbot. You've probably heard about Google Cloud as well, even the Tensor AI hardware. But there's one thing that this company never let go of, which is the intent for research over at Mountain View. It is my pleasure to speak with Pushmeet Singh Kohli, who is the Vice President of Strategic and Science, sorry, my, my mistake, Pushmeet Kohli, Vice President of Science and Strategic Affairs at Google DeepMind. Thank you, Pushmeet, so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure. How's the weather in London? Has the winter set in? It has been cold, but uh, the weather today is uh, quite bright and sunny. <laughs> On that note, Pushmeet, I wanted to start off by asking you, DeepMind is straddling that fundamental science and applied AI uh, line. And there have been examples of recent successes with Alpha Geometry and Alpha Fold. I'm intrigued, and I'm guessing most of the audience here would be too. What is the framework with which you decide which sort of applied sciences require bandwidth and investment with AI? Thanks, uh, Vishal. I mean, the, the, if you look back at the mission of DeepMind and ever since uh, the founding of DeepMind here in London, uh, almost 15 years back now, uh, the mission has been to build AI responsibly to benefit humanity. And so the benefit humanity sort of part, we believe one of the key things that, that AI can do to benefit humanity is to really push the boundaries of human knowledge of what we know about the world that, that we live in, about ourselves as human beings, about life. And that we do uh, through science by making progress in many uh, scientific areas. And, and, um, and we have been very sort of fortunate to be able to sort of show the potential of AI in um, problems like the protein structure prediction problem and alpha fold. So mainly our sort of focus is on what are these root door problems where AI can have transformational impact? Impact which will not just lead to some small improvement, but will be, which will really transform the way society does something. AlphaFold is a great example in this, uh, uh, in this as, as a case study. Before AlphaFold was announced by Google DeepMind, uh, it used to take almost five years sometimes to figure out the structure of one single protein. And these proteins are the building blocks of life. Uh, everything to do with drug discovery, to designing sort of new enzymes to deal with pollution and so on. Life is essentially made up of proteins. And yet we did not know the structure of these proteins. And it would have taken a huge amount of work and effort to uncover uh, this knowledge. And what AlphaFold did is just made all of that sort of knowledge available extremely quickly. But in a matter of uh, a few seconds now, anyone on the planet can figure out the structure of any protein on the planet, which would have taken millions of dollars and, uh, and multiple years in the past. Push me into general conventional wisdom would suggest that LLMs are getting better and therefore they must be applied to more problems. But DeepMind's approach is different. It's more of a narrow approach where you tailor a model for a particular domain or a use case. How do you balance these two requirements? Our approach, um, Vishal, has always been to push the boundaries of AI and to develop the most powerful models. And when we think about like, what, is the, what are the most powerful and most compet, uh, sort of uh, competent models, uh, essentially the way to measure intelligence is to figure out how quickly a model is able to accomplish a task. And we have uh, ever since our founding been able to uh, developing models which are ever more competent in solving harder problems and in a more general way which require less data and less supervision. 
And so, in some sense, LLMs are a natural progression of that longer term uh, focus that we have that we have had. We, on one side, we are working on building fundamental sort of breakthroughs that push the efficiency of AI models, makes them general, uh, from coming up with new paradigms like deep reinforcement learning, which showed uh, its benefits uh, on sort of Atari and the uh, the legendary sort of uh, Lisa Doll Go match in South Korea to then uh, sort of specialist models for AlphaFold. And e in each sort of iteration, whether we were using the uh, a specific architecture, like a transformer architecture or, or sort of improving it, or sort of using the models themselves, like the Gemini uh, generation of models, which now have been able to show competency across a wide variety of tasks, not just um, in answering questions about your everyday sort of uh, questions that you might be interested in, and but also deep mathematical problems. So Gemini Deep Think uh, was one of our premier models which achieved gold medal performance at the International Math Olympiad. So this is not an easy thing, right? Very few people would are able to sort of solve maths problems at that level, yet a very general purpose model like Gemini Deep Think was able to achieve that. So if you look at the spectrum, yes, we are working on specialized models for specific uh, tasks, uh, but there are also general models that we are building to make that whole process much more efficient. At the end of the day, it's all about the problem. How do you solve the most impactful problems and in the most efficient manner possible using AI? Would you say that we have reached the point where scientists and doctors can start trusting AI with their work? Now, I think um, uh, to answer your question, this is a new kind of intelligence. We are, we are still sort of learning uh, and we are trying to understand the behavior of uh, this technology. Um, and yes, it is very powerful, but it does make mistakes. And the important element is to figure out when it is basically giving us the right results and when it is sort of failing. So uh, another going, uh, going back to sort of AlphaFold as an example, now it solved this amazing problem. It could figure out the structure of any protein and, but still, if you're a biologist, you will think, well, this uh, model, although it is uh, extremely accurate, it still makes mistakes sometimes. And uh, I wouldn't want to spend the next five years of my life or 10 years of my life assuming it is correct and then finding out that it is wrong. So AlphaFold was not just very accurate, but it was also very good about showing its uncertainty about the problem. So where it made a mistake, it also sort of uh, held his ha hand high and said, well, I might have been uh, uncertain about this particular solution, so don't trust it that much. Now, if you look at the modern generation of LLMs, they are making improvements, but sometimes they do hallucinate and we are building technology to make sure that when they do hallucinate, we can catch it and also give users more understanding about when the output can be trusted and when it can't. Kushmir, many AI labs and AI companies claim to do a lot of application between AI and science, but DeepMind is on a different level altogether. How has that been possible and how difficult was it to stay that course during the last few years? Yeah, so I, I think um, that goes back to uh, even the founding of DeepMind. We, um, we started with approaching AI and the problem of achieving AGI as a scientific problem. So the institution, the organization in its DNA, it has science uh, sort of embedded in it. And so it was very natural for us to both approach AGI as a scientific endeavor. And then when we are applying, when we are thinking about where do we see the massive impact of AI, we see it in really pushing the boundaries of science in bringing sort of new knowledge. So just to give you an example, we didn't stop at AlphaFold and said, well, we have solved an amazing sort of problem and uh, let's declare victory, which we could have, like we won the Nobel uh, Prize. Uh, but we said, that's not it. The true impact of a technology like AlphaFold is in accelerating the treatment of diseases. 
So we spun off Isomorphic Labs, which is now one of the premier uh, sort of organizations which is really pushing the boundaries of how do you accelerate drug discovery? Pushmeet, I'm sure most of the audience is also interested in knowing this. What are you working on right now? And more to that point, which milestones in the last decade are you most happy about? Yeah, so I think, um, Vishal, I mean, there is just so much that needs to be done. Um, Alpha Fold was a great example, but it also sort of, it, it was essentially um, a, a moment like we have uh, taken a rocket and we have landed on the moon. But now we need to build a rocket factory and land on all the other sort of important, uh, all, most uh, problems that uh, society faces, right? The problem of energy. How do we build abundant, sustainable energy? So can we use AI to unlock fusion? Can you think about material discovery? Can you come up with new types of materials which will completely transform our ability to deal with energy, to deal with the challenges that the world is facing from pollution to sort of uh, climate change and so on? So um, there are a number of different uh, endeavors from understanding weather, our weather prediction work on sort of uh, which can predict now the tra trajectories of cyclones much more efficiently and uh, sort of uh, uh, accurately than the classical models. There is just so much work that uh, uh, that is being done in the team across so many different disciplines. Um, and it's not just in the sciences. What I'm also very proud of, uh, of DeepMind for is also our focus on responsibility, that we are deploying AI responsibly. We are not sort of approaching this uh, amazing era with uh, move fast and let's break things uh, mentality. We are going with it with an element of let's be bold, but let's also be responsible. So in that context, we have recently sort of announced and shared this big breakthrough of SynthID, which is as you see all this generative AI content that is coming onto the information ecosystem, people are sort of worried, like what is real versus what is synthetic gen synthetically generated? So SynthID as a technology is amazing because what it does, it embeds an imperceptible signal in any in all generative modalities, whether it's text, whether it's images, whether it's video, whether it's audio. And this will allow users to figure out what was generated by a Google AI model and what is a natural or a, a real image or a real sort of audio sample. And I think we need uh, breakthroughs like this to make sure that AI does not only sort of uh, sort of come up with these amazing breakthroughs, but it also is deployed responsibly in the world. Pushmeet, I know 12 months is a very long time in the AI space, but I would still like to ask you, as we head into 2026, what are the big themes that you see in the space of AI and science in particular? I think uh, one uh, thing that we will see is the, uh, there will be a lot more emphasis. I think we, uh, with AlphaFold, we were scratching the surface in what is possible. Um, and we have made these fundamental advances in uh, structural biology, but the implications in healthcare, in drug discovery, those we will see uh, sort of really ha uh, accelerating, right? Especially in healthcare, like, like a, a country like India uh, has a, a huge potential in leveraging AI for healthcare. Um, if I, I, I would like to tell you that there are 180,000 researchers and students who are using AlphaFold in India. If you had told me that there are like almost two lakh people in India who are studying protein structures to uh, uh, sort of develop new drugs, understand disease, I would not have believed you, right? But it also shows the research ecosystem, how expansive it is now that there are almost 200,000 people who are using these technologies and these technologies have been able to democratize innovation at such a fast, fast pace. So we will see acceleration of science. We will also see acceleration of certain other technologies like agentic systems, right? Where AI systems get more autonomy and are able to do many more powerful sort of tasks. So these are the two sort of trends, but of course we, we need to make sure that these things are done safely, responsibly, and we don't just uh, uh, move too fast 
uh, without uh, due uh, process. Uh, Pushmit, you mentioned about uh, the alpha fold users in India. Uh, my my last question would be how what is how would you democratize AI tools of this magnitude, and what would be the key elements to that? Yeah, I think that sort of the two key things that I think about when we when we think about these breakthroughs is not just what the breakthroughs do. Uh, to, to the scientific uh, sort of process, but we also think about access and understanding. We can have these amazingly powerful tools, but how do we make sure that people around the world are able to access them and then more importantly, understand them? Because yes, they have strengths, but the current generation of tools also have weaknesses. And if you use a tool irresponsibly, then you might not get the uh, result that uh, you are after. It's like you have access to a, this Formula One car, but you need to know how to drive it properly. Otherwise, you, you're just going to get into an accident. So I think that's an important sort of element, and which is why we have spent a lot of time in whenever we have a, a, a come up with a breakthrough like AlphaFold, we have a, a spent a lot of time in making sure, for one, that it is accessible. So the fact that three almost more than 3 million people around the world yeah, on day uh, one could use alpha fold predictions, but also that they have the understanding of what are the limitations of the technology and what are the strengths. So a lot of focus on education, of making sure that researchers and students coming up have an understanding of what the technology is able to offer. That's, we are pretty much uh, at the end of time. Thank you so much, Pushmeet, for joining us. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Thank you.